Looking for something meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. This is the year of unstoppable momentum. Anybody been feeling some? Anybody been feeling some acceleration going on in your life? I guarantee you there's some good things that have been happening in your life. Jobs coming available. Somebody moving into new positions. Come on, somebody. New opportunities. And we bless God. And this is, as I stated earlier, and all of you know, this is um, the weekend that we particularly commemorate the life and death and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr civil rights leader who was killed, gunned down for uh, trying to bring about equality and justice for all people. Some who are a part of the listening audience through streaming, as well as some who are here generation that was born into the movement. We were young and in elementary school we were taught all of the aspects of the struggle. In some kind of way we have not been so effective in sharing with this generation the real struggle of what it took for us to have the opportunities that we have today. So we want to just today turn our attention to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? If we want to talk about today, uh, Unstoppable Momentum Part 3, I want to subtitle this Grace to Handle This Race. Grace to Handle This Race. Father, speak now to your people. Use this, your servant, as an instrument. I pray, Father, that you move me out of the way and usher in the power and the presence of your Holy Ghost. And, Father, we know that your word is true, it's alive, it's quick, sharper than. Any two-edged sword able to cut sin on the left and the right. And Father, I thank you that your word brings healing and deliverance. And I thank you, Father, that you enrich us continuously with your word. Now open our hearts, illuminate our minds, that we may be better as we hear and grow there by your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I want to sort of deal with a subject this morning, an issue uh, that sometimes can be very sensitive, and it's dealing with the fact that, you know, Dr. King led the country on bringing equality uh, as a normal way of life for all people, and he was killed over 48 years ago, and his desire was for all humanity to live and to experience who God had created and purposed them to be without there being prejudice based on skin, race, color, and creed. And we know the reality is that we are living in an hour and a day where racism still 
exist. I want you to take a look at this quick uh, clip and then uh, we'll continue with what we have to share. If you get those lights for me. The, the point, you got the point that we live in a day and an hour where people are judged by the color of their skin and not the content of their character. And, and the Bible has already made it clear that the heart and the intention of God, uh, that when he created everybody equally, that there was to be no distinction in race. And, and Dr. King fought to for that equality. When you look at Genesis 1 and 27, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We are all, no matter your race, creed, or color, we are all created in the image of God. And then John uh, chapter number 7 and verse number 24 says this. Uh, it says, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And then Romans, over at Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 12, uh, uh, Paul reminds us that uh, there's no distinction. In verse number 12, he says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him and uh, finally James 2 and 9 reminds us about showing partiality he says this uh, in the second chapter uh, and the ninth verse he says but if you show partiality you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors now understand then that the reality is 
that 48 years after Dr. King's death, as we commemorate his birthday, we still live in a time where prejudice and partiality and racism is still very much alive and active. Would you say amen? We live in a day where uh, many people, not all, and we can't put anybody in any one category, but uh, many people within the Caucasian community are unwilling to admit that it still exists, uh, that, that perceptions and actions toward minority people is still often based on color, and, and it matters not uh, the level of education or economic status or spiritual or religious level an African-American exists, racism is still alive. Now understand racism, when prejudice becomes racism, when one group in society uses power to enforce their racial prejudices over another group or other groups in such a way that they receive more benefits and privileges while the other group receives fewer benefits and privileges. Now no doubt, no doubt this morning, uh, that if I ask each person to come to the microphone and to share uh, one story of how uh, you have been the victim of racism, maybe in the last seven days or the last 15 days, you could do it and you would have many other examples to spare. I see a lot of young people here and, and our young people experience it often in schools and, as they're overlooked and, and they experience it in the malls as they are followed and, and in other places in society. We, we experience it in the workplace. We see it in communities over and over and over again. You, you watch how you are often in the same situation as a counterpart, and yet you are treated differently uh, with no explanation and certainly unjustifiably uh, you've been done wrongly time and time again. Maybe it's from uh, uh, some subtle things like being overlooked uh, in a department store or uh, to be overlooked for a promotion. I mean, there are so many instances. And, and the sad thing is that whenever it is brought up uh, as an issue, uh, when it's addressed uh, with a desire to see change, we find often uh, when African Americans are, are then described as being uh, petty and, and being overly sensitive and, and when will they ever get satisfied and, and when will they uh, ever get over the past? All of us, all of us uh, grow tired of seeing it over and over again, experiencing uh, these things in law enforcement. My God, even in, in Hollywood, in snubbing actors and actresses for, from significant awards and so forth. We see it happening uh, whenever people are sentenced in crimes. You can do the same uh, crime and get uh, different time. We see it uh, in politics and, and uh, everywhere in the culture. We see it. And the reality is that we will probably be dealing with this until heaven and earth passes away, but we still must address it. And, and we've got to fight to overcome it just as Dr. King did in and during the civil rights movement. Now, local and I thank God, I thank God for what's been happening locally, uh, even within the Gaston uh, County area. We have what is called the GC3, the Gaston Citizens and, and Coalition, the Clergy Citizens Coalition. And, and uh, we have been meeting and dealing with intentionally and deliberately addressing racism white pastors and black pastors coming together seeking ways to prevail over it here and now and and uh, we uh, several weeks ago sometimes before Christmas I believe it was or Thanksgiving we went 
uh, to the mountains. We went on a retreat, all of us. We rolled the bus together and we uh, went up together, uh, pastors, white pastors, black pastors, and, and some people who were uh, citizens. And, and we went to have workshops on Friday and, and spent time there and then on Saturday. And we, we wanted to get in and really deal uh, with the issues of race and and racism and and prejudice and and so we spent a lot of time while we were there and on the Saturday we really dealt with uh, something uh, that's called white privilege white privilege and and uh, we had uh, we had the facilitator who directed us and and instructed us on on how to deal with it and 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 white privileges is when a, a direct result of racism in society uh, is the provision of privileges for white people. Uh, when racial prejudices are enforced sy systemically by the uh, dominant group in the U.S., white people receive unearned privileges as a result. This is a Caucasian person that says this, to be white in America is not to have to think about it at all. Another uh, Caucasian lady said it this way, uh, white is the race that need not speak its name. And all of us had to deal with that. And we had to really deal with this ideal that, uh, that some of the things that we are seeing in society uh, have to do with what is white privilege. And, and, and the, the facilitator split up the, the group and the white pastors went into uh, one area and the black pastors went into another area. And our assignment was to take uh, a marker and paper and list everything that you can think of that makes you proud to be black and everything that you can think of that makes you proud to be white. And uh, so we took our time there and, and they called us back together and, and we began now to share uh, the list. And, uh, and when you looked at the list that the white pastors uh, came with, up with, the, the list dealt with things that uh, were perks in life. And, and uh, they talked about not having the fear of being followed in stores. They uh, talked about not having the fear of uh, being profiled in traffic and, and not fearing if they would be accepted or rejected based upon their race in the culture. They, uh, they listed the things like uh, not concerned about going into a bank or mortgage firm uh, to get a mortgage based upon uh, perception. And, and, and the list went on like that. And then we looked at uh, the black uh, pastor's list and it dealt with being glad that, uh, you know, we have the ability to prevail even in the face of prejudice and, and racism and, and the desire for those in the majority of society uh, to hold you back and, and how we are the most resilient people uh, on the face of the earth that no matter what we've been handed, we have somehow been uh, able to overcome. And we talked about our, our culture and all those things, but you could see the differences in the concerns and what each group was proud of. Of, and uh, the white pastors had to start dealing with the ideal that there is a reality of white privilege. Now, uh, there is, there is uh, the denial on the part of many Caucasians or the refusal to acknowledge white privilege. And I'm thankful that we have a group of ministers. Not all the ministers in the area are participating, black or white, but I thank God uh, that we have some open-minded men of God uh, of all races who are coming together uh, to deal with this issue. And, and even on this past Thursday, as we were preparing uh, in our meeting for the celebration tomorrow, and, and we said after our retreat in the mountains that we would take time at each one of our monthly meetings to spend some time talking about and dealing with the things that our members and all of us in culture experience on a regular basis. And this past Thursday, we were in the meeting and, and uh, it came to this part of the discussion. And so the pastor, a uh, Caucasian pastor that was leading uh, the group that morning, he said, listen, let's, uh, I just want to kind of throw this out there. 
uh, what are some of the things that maybe uh, we who are Caucasian pastors can do to help with this issue and so forth. And, and the room was a little quiet, and, and so I, I opened it up, and I said, listen, I, I, this is not going to be something that is articulated wonderfully. I, I don't have a whole lot of phrases uh, for, uh, for sharing this, but, but if you could just tell your members, just stop it. Just please stop it. Just, I, I don't know how to say it other than that. Just stop it. And, and I went on uh, to say that um, Jonathan works with the power company. And, and uh, last week, uh, he went in to one of the local stores that the power company uses um, that they go in and the employees go and make purchases. And the company pays for the items. And so the company had continued to do that, and the other men uh, in the department had gone up to get their equipment, and no problem. And so now here comes Jonathan, African-American young man. Uh, he goes in, and he goes through uh, the ritual of what they told him to do at the office, and they said, go in, show your badge and, and uh, your ID. He had on his work clothes, and uh, pick out what you need, sign it, and uh, we will. they'll send the bill to us. Well, how about this time? Uh, uh, the salesperson says, your name is not on the list. She said, your name is not on the list, and, and uh, you can't get yours. And he said, what do you mean? And my supervisor said, all I need to do is come in here and pick it out and try it on, and you would then uh, si I'd sign my name and get my things. And she said, well, I'm sorry. He said, here's my badge. Here's my ID. The other guys did the same thing, and this is what the, uh, the pattern has been. And she said, well, you got to call. You got to tell him to send up a new list. Your name is not on it. And she refused to give him the items. So he goes back. He tells the other guys. Uh, they said, did you get your stuff? He said, no. He tells the supervisor that, and that I didn't get my things. Why? He said, because the lady, the salesperson said, my name is not on the list. And they all said, what list? The only thing that we do is go in, show our badge, and we have on our uniform. We're in a company truck, and we try it on and sign our names, and we go on about our business. But here we have now all of those guys were Caucasian guys, and now you you have this African-American guy who comes in and now this whole thing changes and so I said to uh, the pastor and the other pastors I said I don't know how to say this except to tell your members to stop it we're trying to encourage our young people. We're trying to motivate them and tell them who they can be and, and who God has created them to be. And they go out into the culture. They go out into uh, the school system and, and into the community, and they experience things like that. And we're telling them that they have unstoppable momentum, but everything seems to be unfolding, that there is stoppable behavior. I said, just tell them, just stop. Can't articulate that any differently. And then Pastor Freeman uh, shared. He said, listen, uh, my son and I went over to visit my wife at work. We wanted to surprise her on our way home one day, and we decided that we were just going to stop by our office and say hello. They did so, spoke with her, and he says by the time they got out into the traffic, back into his truck, they were not 100 yards out, and whoop, police pulls him over. He said, my God, what in the world could I have done? And he told his son, he said, roll down your windows and put your hands on the side so they can see him. And the son, 13 years old, said, Dad, why do we have to do that? He said, do what I said. And because in his mind, he said, I didn't want there to be any kind of accident. And so he comes and the, uh, the policeman comes and, and he says, what in the world did I do? And he said, well, your taillights are pink. He said, my tail lights are pink. What do you mean? My tail lights are pink. Your tail lights are pink, and you can't uh, ride around with pink tail lights. He said, I know what's probably happening. Pastor Freeman said, This uh, truck is a 1980 something, and maybe the tail lights faded some. And so, uh, but Pastor Freeman shared that, and he said, I share this because the issue really was not that the tail lights were pink. The issue is that my wife works for the housing authority, and here we are, uh, uh, African American man pulling out, and the 
the police in his mind, he must have figured that there must be something going on. So he stopped me. And so I said uh, uh, to the pastors, and we shared with them that, and that you got to speak to your congregations. You got to say to people uh, who uh, have their uh, head buried in the sand that these things are not happening. You got to go and say to them, these things need to stop. Speak up. And I, I went on the share, and I said, listen, uh, we gotta, you got to speak out and, and tell politicians to quit uh, using Christian rhetoric uh, to shroud their racism. People, ha you, you have a conservative party that has, has now created a Donald Trump, and a Donald Trump represents the one who's saying everything that people have been wanting to say and uh, using bigotry and racism and all kinds of other isms, and, and now they want wanting to back, back from him. And, and yet they, they use the agenda of Christianity, but they are promoting much racism by being oppressive. And these people are not in my congregations. They are in y'all congregation and so you need to say something that's what I said to the pastors and so we got into a very uh, frank conversation and one pastor said you know this is really something that we need you all to continue to encourage us and pray with us on because these are subjects that we have never had to preach So the truth is that uh, there, there are in the 21st century many great strides and successes. We have an African-American uh, president of the United States, which in reality has brought out as in the 60s the mindset of gross bitterness and hatred for Af African-Americans and people of color. So, so you say then, well, we got these uh, situations and these things are going on in the culture. And this is uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's celebration. Uh, of his birthday weekend. What do we do? How do we handle this? We got to understand that anytime there is a any system or any individual or any group that attempts to divert, to block, or to derail the progress or, of another, it is not of God. God is in his infinite wisdom, knew the challenges that we as humans would face. And, and understand that, uh, that life is really about fulfilling our godly purpose in the earth. There are many things that uh, the, uh, the enemy uses to try to stop you. But Dr. Martin Luther King understood uh, that uh, to be successful in a world challenged by race where uh, there are obvious oppressors who desire to see you fail, uh, that that you got to understand that what's behind it all is the kingdom of darkness. You got to understand we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our issue and the issue with humanity is really not against white and black and Hispanic and Asian. It's an issue with that the enemy stands behind and he uses whatever means and method that he can to stop you from fulfilling your God ordained destiny. Dr. King uh, taught the principles of Christ that we are to respond to evil and uh, injustice uh, non-violently. And so uh, as we think about uh, how to deal with all of these issues and, and how to handle these circumstances, I, I, I said, Lord, what do I say? Because we, we have uh, uh, a society um, that's at a boiling point and people are at each other's throats and we got a young generation that, uh, that's angry and frustrated with all of the way they've been treated and, and how they have been viewed and, and, and what do we say uh, in this culture where people have become discouraged uh, trying to move about uh, fulfilling their assignment and the first thing uh, that he would have me to share with you today number one is never fight evil with evil Let's go over to Romans. I got some word scripture here now. I'm in the word. Romans chapter number 12. And go down to verse number 9. Are y'all here? Romans chapter number 12 verse 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Now, come on, that, that's love for everybody. That's not uh, talking about any particular race, creed, or color. That's talking about love, the agape love. He said, let your love be without hypocrisy. Huh? Don't let your love be like that love 
that was the first hater song that the OJs sang. You know, I saw this the other day. The first hater song was they smile in your face. <laughs> the backstab. He said, don't let, don't have that kind of love. Your love needs to be without hypocrisy. Your love needs to be real. That when I say I love you, I mean it. It doesn't care. I don't care what your race is. I don't care what your creed is. I don't care what your economic status is. That our love should be without hypocrisy. He says, abhor, hate that which is evil and cling to that which is good. And then verse 10, he said, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another. He said, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue steadfastly in prayer. He said, distributing to the needs of the uh, saints, given to hospitality. And he said, look at verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. You got to understand that, uh, that when you encounter situations and, and people are trying to hold you back and people are talking against you and, and people are trying to overlook you, you don't fight evil with evil. He said, you got to learn how to bless those who are trying to stop you. You got to learn how to uh, speak well even of those that are trying to block you. He said, don't, uh, don't curse them. Don't. And he said, but bless them. Say something good and so forth. Show forth the character and the strength that's in you because you got the power of God in you. That's what uh, Dr. King taught. That's what uh, he lived and uh, he moved non-violently and there were people even at that day uh, that were ready and they uh, they were ready to move and, and, and the Black Panthers came up and, and other groups but uh, but he said no we got to do this thing like Jesus would do it. I know I know that and that we've been whipped and we've been beat uh, but we got to understand that, uh, that we are God's children and we got to learn how to bless people. You got to learn and that he said rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep and be of the same mind toward one another do not set your mind on high things but associate with the humble do not be wise in your own opinion and then he said repay no one evil for evil have regard for good things in the sight of all men. We got to teach our young people. We got to teach our seniors. We got to teach our young adults. You don't do evil for evil. Uh, but if you're going to respond to the things that are happening, never fight evil with evil. And then number two, don't allow bad perceptions to be true. Uh, we understand we live in a world where, like in the video that you saw, this lady judged those guys based upon their race. She already had in her mind uh, what, uh, who they were, how they acted, and that's how we live. We live in a society, not everybody, thank God, and not everybody, but we live in a majority society that when they see your color, when they see you come along, when they see your attire, when they see uh, the way your hair is done, they already have in their minds the kind of behavior uh, that when you walk into class, sometimes the teacher is sizing you up. When you walk into the department store, they're thinking you come in the shop, live, and when you come in, uh, they're thinking you come, uh, you're coming to be ugly. When you come in onto the job, they're thinking you're ready to sit back and eat chicken and, and, and uh, le being lazy and so forth. And here's what I say, that uh, don't allow the bad perceptions to be true. Huh? Turn over to, uh, if you will, go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, are y'all still here? 1 Peter chapter number 4. And uh, verse, let's look at verse 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. I say to our young people, I say to our young adults, I say to all people that if there are people who are prejudging you, if there are people who already have their minds made up about what they think you are when you walk in, let them be wrong. Don't let them be right. 
Don't let, and too often, too often, uh, you end up being just what they uh, thought you were. You, 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 so we got to learn how to uh, change our attitude, change our behavior. And, and when they think I'm coming in the store to steal, uh, let it be a liar. And when, when they think they need to follow me and not follow somebody else, let it be a liar. When they think that I'm coming in to disrupt the classroom and I'm not going to obey and do my work, let it be a liar. When they think I'm just a hoodlum uh, because I got on some Tim's and because I got on a hoodie, let it be a liar. When they think that I don't have a mind, let it be a lie. I think about uh, when uh, the Seattle, Seattle Sioux, uh, Seahawks won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. And you remember, what's his first name? Sherman. I can't think of the first name. R Richard. Richard Sherman, uh, the cornerback, he was, he was so outstanding, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I speak against that today, but he was so outstanding back then that, uh, that, that, that he, he, he blocked balls, he knocked down balls, and he knocked down the ball, and they won the Super Bowl, and at the end of the thing, he was running, he was hyped, and he, I mean, boy, he was just fired up, and, and it was a hard time to try to do an interview, and they put the mic in his face, and the reporter started asking him question and man he was just pumped I mean the adrenaline was flowing he was pumped and the sports writers and other people uh, from that point on begin to criticize him and they start labeling him as a football thug this thug this thug and, and the way because he was aggressive and, and the way he was carrying on and here they are now they begin to list him as a thug and here's a man with a degree from Stanford University but because of how they looked at him and, and because of how they perceived him they called him a thug and here's a man who had a degree from a place that many people would not even be able to have gotten into I wish I could get somebody to help me so when they perceive you in a bad way let it be right wrong don't live up to it when they profile you don't have and they stop you don't have drugs in the car they, they, if that's how if that's how we're rolling right now and they got to come and they want to they want to check me and they want to ask me something go ahead I, I know my rights but it's a lie Huh? If, if, if you don't think that I'm smart enough to do my homework like everybody else, check the record. Here it is. Let it be a lie. For the Bible says, uh, let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. In other words, he said, if you got to go through something, if you got to deal with something, at least not let it be true. Y'all got me? That's what Dr. King was trying to convey, uh, that that's how we're going to change minds. That's how we're going to change attitudes. That's how we're going to shift perceptions. Number three, and I'm done. Dr. King taught us that we got to have self-determination. Huh? You got to have some self-determination. You, you got to decide that no matter who tries to break me down, no matter who tries to stop me, no matter who tries to block me, no matter what they try to do to put stumbling blocks in my way, I'm going to love people right on. I'm going to show them mercy. I'm going to bless those who persecute me because I got self-determination and I know that I am uh, created in the image of God like every other human in the earth you ought to give God praise for yourself because you are fearfully and wonderfully made I don't care what they call you I don't care how people call you out of their names what they say they are a lie and the truth is not in them I got self-determination and that's why uh, the writer says in Hebrews chapter 12 he said listen you got to make up your mind that you're going to be successful you're going to uh, you're going to achieve you're going to walk in destiny you're going to walk in purpose I, I don't care if your hair is, is is long or short I don't care if you're light or dark white or black I don't care if you're Asian I don't care if you're African I don't care uh, who you are Latino you got to recognize who you are in God and you got to say since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race 
that is set before us. We need to understand that God will give us grace to handle this race. The race that we're in for our destiny, the race that we're dealing with in terms of racism, and the race uh, in order to fulfill uh, our Christian calling. He will give us the ability. God will empower us. He will cause us to prevail. Do y'all believe that today? See, the writer, the writer was telling, he was trying to encourage a group of people who had become discouraged in the Christian way. Uh, the people were being persecuted uh, there uh, in that community. And so he was writing them uh, to tell them not to give up. They were ready to turn back away from Christianity and to go back into the world or go back into their uh, Jewish practices. And, and he's saying, no, you got to continue. You got to stay uh, on the course. You got to continue to persevere. You cannot back down now. I know sometimes it gets difficult. I know that sometimes the enemy comes against you. I know that you have challenges trying to walk into things that God has purposed in your life. But this is not the time to start talking about turning back. This is not the time to give up uh, the course. And he goes on and he tells them that you got to hold fast to your profession of faith. When you look down in Hebrews chapter 10, he said, because he who promised is faithful and he is able to perform it. I know that what God I promise you sometimes it looks like it's not coming. I know sometimes that it looks shaky and I know it seems like there are people who are trying to pull uh, things away from your destiny but God promised you not humanity. I'm not standing on the promises of man. I'm standing on the promises of God and if God said it, I believe it and I know he'll do just what he said and even we know that God is our refuge and God is our strength. He's our very present help in the time of trouble and so we got to recognize that no matter what it looks like it, it, it seems like it's at a far off distance you got to understand that with your unstoppable momentum you shall get to the place of victory because God has already done it he's already opened it up and so the writer of Hebrews says hold fast to your faith look at your neighbor's neighbor hold fast to your profession hold fast to that you've been speaking hold fast to that that you've been decreeing hold fast to that you've been dreaming hold fast fast to that that you've been decreeing hold fast to that that you've been reading hold fast to that uh, that you've been confessing hold fast to what's been spoken over you hold fast even in the face of the devil hold fast even when it looks like people are pulling you down hold fast look at somebody and say hold fast you gotta stick right there tell your neighbor you gotta stick and stay right there uh, because God promised uh, that I have made you the head and not the tail God has promised that you bless going in and you bless coming out God has promised that I'm gonna give you things that you never uh, even imagine. I know the things that I think towards you, saith the Lord, uh, to give you peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. And I want to tell somebody this morning that you got to continue to persevere. And then so the writer comes along in the Hebrews and he goes through the 11th chapter and he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And he begins to talk about how the world was formed and we believe it by faith. He began to talk about uh, how those who were in biblical history moved by faith. He talked about how Abel uh, gave a more excellent sacrifice by faith. He talked about how Abraham followed God by faith. He talked about how Noah, uh, even though it wasn't raining, and even though they didn't have a forecast for rain, how Noah built an ark and waited for God to send the rain. He talked about how all of those people trusted in God. He talked about how they had faith and and they believed that God would do what God said. And then he said, the thing about it is that these people did this by faith. And they did it before the promise was fulfilled that Jesus was coming. They did it with expectation that the Messiah was coming. He said, so surely now that you have experienced and you know Jesus has come, you know he has fulfilled the promise, then certainly you ought to have faith. You ought not be backing down. And so some Sometimes we let a little trouble cause us to back down. We let a little a lack cause us to back down. But he says you got to understand that all these people are around you. They are cheering you on. And that's why he comes to the 12th chapter. And he says, so since, therefore, since we got all these people of faith, all these people who have endured, all these people who have been successful by faith, he says, since we have all of them, let's lay aside every weight. 
and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run uh, with endurance the race that is set before us. You got to understand that there's some mindsets you got to lay down. There's some mentalities you got to lay down. Uh, there's some things that might be good, uh, but you got to keep them in their pr right priority and that you got to lay down that can be awake and cause you not to be able to succeed. And then there's some things that are sinful that we got to lay down. We got to cast them down. We got to put them under our feet so that we can run the race with patience. My God, a pair of Tim's is wonderful. My God, a hoodie is wonderful. My God, some drop jeans might look good, but you don't need those things when you're trying to get out to run a hundred meter dash. And so you got to understand that there's a time that I got to take off some stuff that might be good. I got to learn what's appropriate at the right time and at the right place place and if it's not appropriate for the time I need to lay it down what do you mean I got to lay down the mentality that I can go on a job interview looking any kind of way huh? I got to lay down the mentality and that somebody owes me something I got to lay down the mentality that I'm inferior to anybody else I got to lay down the mentality and that God has not caused me to be victorious and then I got to know that if I lay it down and I keep on persevering I shall win the prize that's what he said he said if you keep on persevering and I just stopped to encourage somebody on this Dr. Martin Luther King weekend that he said that we shall overcome and I want to tell you we've overcome a whole lot of things but I'm not going to stop the journey now why should I be discouraged and why should I feel a heartache why why should I look down and sad uh, but I'm going to keep on marching uh, that was a song they used to sing uh, and they said I ain't going to let nobody uh, turn me around uh, I wish I had two or three people who would be determined uh, that I'm not going to let anybody turn me down uh, you can scandalize my name uh, you can call me everything uh, but a child of God uh, but I know who I am uh, I know whose I am uh, I know who created me. I know I got a destiny. High five your name and say, neighbor, you got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on marching. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. I don't care how many setbacks you've had. I want you to know that God's going to give you grace to handle this race. I messed up in my life. I messed up on this journey, but I'm so glad that if I keep on putting one foot before the other foot, he said, I will be with you. I'll go with you all the way. He said, I'll go with you through the dry places. I'll go with you through the fire. I'll go with you through the flood. Say yes. God is with us and you are going to succeed. You are going to conquer. You are prevailing. My blessing is manifesting in the face of a day where there is still blatant racism, hostility, anger, and meanness. But our encouragement is that our hope is not in man's system, it's not in a political system, not in the White House. My hope is built. Huh? <laughs> On Jesus. Mm. And so I'm 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 decreeing, I'm decreeing, Lord, I'm pressing on. That song we used to sing in the old day, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining. You know that. Every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet. Come on, somebody. I'm going higher. Anybody going higher? Come on. I'm going higher. The only place for me to go is up. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't block me. You can't stop me and nobody else. Because I got the love of Jesus. I got the power of Jesus. And I decree unto you.
God's given you grace to handle this race. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.